In just a moment, we're going to get into our discussion about paid family leave, but we thought we'd walk you through some of the numbers first. So our first slide coming up here, New York City facts. New York State, in fact, is the fifth state in the nation to really get on the paid family leave bandwagon. We're following the folks out in California, our neighbors in New Jersey, Rhode Island, and Washington all got the memo before we finally cleared it here in New York State. But we've got it, but the program doesn't go in effect until January 1st of 2018, a little bit more than 20 months away. There's offers New York City residents up to 12 weeks of paid time off. Sounds good, right? Moving on to the next slide, some more facts about New York State. Most employees covered by New York State's current temporary disability insurance are eligible for the program, and paid family leave covers both full and part-time workers in the state. Employees only have to have been insured for six months before they can become eligible for those benefits. One more thing I want to show you here. Nationally, there are about 12% of U.S. private workers, private sector workers, have access to paid family leave. Uh, companies like Netflix and Spotify are among the forefront of offering this paid leave. President Obama has granted more than $2 billion worth of funds to encourage states to get in on the program, and funding is going to be uh, in New York City coming through workers' payroll deductions. Now, you might think we're doing really great here. We finally got on board fifth in the nation, but let's take this thing global. Looking at the landscape of the world, the U.S., federally, we still have zero weeks of paid family leave, but look at those folks in the U.K. They get 40 weeks of paid family leave uh, for maternity, and down on the other end of the scale, working our way around, Iran gets 12 weeks, Mexico the same thing. The folks in Congo, Chad, and China get about 14 weeks. Our neighbors to the north in Canada, 15 weeks. So you can see all those numbers into the 20s and, of course, famously in the UK for 40 weeks. So we've done a lot of great things, but there's a lot of work left to do for us to catch up. So that is a look at paid family leave as it stands in New York State right now. Let's get into the A Block. For sure. It's been a long time coming, and we still have to wait about 20 months for it. But to tell us more about how they think paid family leave will play out, we want to welcome back New York City Councilmember Lori Cumbo. Hi. Thanks for being here with us. Excited to be here. Thank you. And Monifa Bandele, Senior Campaign Director for MomsRising.org. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. And joining us for the first time is Catherine Bodie, Policy Counsel for the New York Civil Liberties Union. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us, Catherine. Lori, can you start us off? What are the components of the Paid Family Leave Act? Well, one of the things that I'm really excited about is that it's taking effect immediately. So it actually began January 1st, which is huge. Um, often these programs have to be phased in. But it will only begin with approximately 20,000 city workers. So this is really an infancy project in the sense of this is a way to roll it out incrementally, although it's starting immediately. But certainly we want to continue to expand um, I don't want to say gradually, but in incremental steps that allow us to take part in this um, as quickly as possible. So the next conversations are happening with our labor unions, um, mm -hmm. those that have contracts with the city. We're trying to move forward in that way, and a lot of it has a lot to do with um, contract negotiations with labor unions, because that should be the next um, phase of how this is rolled out as well. So I'm really very proud, because coming into the city council as chair of the Women's Issues Committee, we had no idea that in the the first term of this administration, we would see such uh, great change on the city level as well as on the state level. And I feel, you know, currently, as we're talking about the presidential elections as well, paid family leave is a huge part of this conversation in a way that it's never been before. So I feel like for families, for moms, for dads, this is an incredible time uh, to be a family in terms of the resources are being put forth in a way that's really going to help families. So, Monifa, mm -hmm. over at Moms Rising, Mm -hmm. org. You guys have some great colleagues in the fight, including the council member. So as it does go further and we try to make New York's law the best one, what's the fight left? 
for us, I mean, uh, we play a key role. You know, we bring the stories of moms and dads to places like City Hall, to the White House even, to make sure that these conversations are happening on a national level about exactly what it means, the, the amount of poverty a family faces, the wage hits that happen. You know, having a baby shouldn't thrust you into poverty, right? Mm -hmm. Having a baby actually helps to grow our economy, and so we should figure out a way for families to be stable. So within that, a couple of things. One. We want to make sure that people know that this is not just maternity leave. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of people come mm -hmm. to me and say, oh, you know, maternity leave says no. This is family leave. So it's parental leave, which means dads, too. Mm -hmm. And we know that this issue can gain traction if we really talk about the whole family, because yep. it's good That's for moms right. and dads. But the other part is that it's also good with families that have children with chronic illnesses, mm -hmm. and also people who are dealing with elders who are very sick and are maybe at the end of their lives, you know. So the family leave is for the beginning of life, the end of life, those those times in, in life when you may have to take leave from work that are really critical. And, life and we want to— Life, life happens. Mm -hmm. right. Life happens. And so we want to make sure that that conversation stays in the, you know, within the dialogue, mm -hmm. that New York State has the strongest law and that we can model that all over the country. But ultimately, like you sh showed on your chart, we need a national bill. Yes. You know, so we true. have yes. everyone from our current president saying this. We have the candidates now talking about that's paid right. family leave, which they never were. And that's because of the grassroots swell, the moms and dads that have been telling their stories. That's right. Well, I think someone's calling in right now offering some support, but I wanted to <laughs> ask you, Catherine, why is the U.S. lagging so far behind? And yeah. you're New York Civil Liberties Union, but you right. guys have a national platform. Is this a priority? Um, certainly, paid family leave has a lot to do with gender equality. Um, women, you know, for a long time were not in the workforce, but more than ever before, we're seeing women as part of the workforce. And women are still seen as caretakers. And that means that there's a huge impact when something comes up in a family, whether it's a new baby or a sick family member. Um, and women are really forced to juggle. Um, figuring out how to manage their job and figuring out how to take care of their family. Um, so certainly this is a big gender equality issue. Mm -hmm. um, but 6.5 million New Yorkers don't have access to paid family leave. And, and that's any paid family leave, mm -hmm. not just mm -hmm. adequate paid family leave. And the majority of people that don't have access are low-income workers. Mm -hmm. So certainly um, this is an economic justice issue as well. As for the nation, um, you know, I think our policies are just slow to recognize the reality of our workforce. Mm -hmm. um, but hopefully that will change soon. I think New York's policy was a big, a big game changer. I think it's going to really, um, as Councilmember Cumbo said, uh, raise the national dialogue so we can get some momentum to see a federal bill passed. Councilmember, how are the businesses reacting? How is the community there reacting? I think that uh, the benefit to how we're doing it is by providing this for city and state workers, um, as well as then going into our labor unions and that sort of thing. I believe that we will eventually begin to create the normalcy um, of paid family leave and that we will begin that discussion. I mean, you know, when I came into the council, the huge discussion at that time was about paid sick days. So if you can imagine that just two and a half, three years ago, we were talking about that workers would not have access to paid five days of work that they could take off to do whatever. Now, what people didn't know is that they thought, well, why don't they utilize their vacation time? Why don't they use the... They didn't have any of that. So this is something where, you know, we have gotten into a state of normalcy, of no paid sick days, no paid family leave, and that's become our norm in this country. When we implement this and roll it out, we're going to begin to understand that we're changing the culture um, and the acceptability of how we function as a society. And if we're moving at the pace of lightning, and that's leaving families behind. And ultimately, when we do look at our homeless shelters, the vast majority of uh, individuals in our homeless shelters are women and children, and children under the age of five. So it's really showing that if we don't get ahead of this, that we're going to continue to have uh, many issues that we're not going to be able to solve. And finally, I just wanted to add also that uh, paid family leave also includes those that are adopting uh, mm -hmm. children, um, also uh, individuals that are going to bring 
a foster child into their home, this will give all of them an opportunity. So we're really redefining what family is and the importance of family and the importance of bonding. But this move, you know, the businesses are going to have uh, challenges with it, but I feel like they've recognized through paid sick days that we're changing the culture of the state of New York. And this um, particular mandate is actually the strongest in the nation. So we're going to set a precedent that's going to show that if we change the norms of what's acceptable, that we actually do better in business. We have stronger employees, we have stronger families, and that's really what it's about. So if the city, Monifa, is uh, modeling behavior for private industry here, there's also some private industry who, frankly, were on the bandwagon before the city, famously like the Spotify's or the Netflix. So mm -hmm. how has that influence shown how private business can really make this work for their bottom line and their employees? Yeah, I definitely want to talk about the business, because there was this myth, even when we were talking about paid sick days, mm -hmm. that small businesses Just can't do it. would be hurt right, by yeah. this, that small businesses didn't want this but what you found out when it, you know when it when it really came out that it wasn't the the mom and pop shops that were against paid sick days or paid family leave. In fact, many of them were already right. providing paid family leave and paid sick days. And studies were done that showed that the mom and pop restaurant didn't want their their favorite, you know, restaurant worker to come in with 104 degrees, that they actually gave people time off. And so it was the big industry that we had to really kind of, you know, get down in the mm -hmm. mud with. But we were able to use the stories of the small businesses. They came out to our rallies, they That's came right. to the hearings, they sat with mm -hmm. councilwomen. And they said, no, I've got, you know, I've got maybe four or five stores here in New York, but I give my employees time off because I want to keep them, That's you know, right. because I want my employees to be healthy. So that was part of the narrative that was, you know, kind of skewed a little bit. And so then you saw the Netflix, the Spotify's, the big businesses coming in. You had people blogging and writing letters like us at Moms Rising mm -hmm. to these big corporations to kind of nudge them to do the right thing. Then the, but the, what we led with, which is really important, is the health issue. Mm -hmm. There is so, there are so many factors to children when moms and dads can stay home with them when they are born. Mothers can establish breastfeeding, and we know now that breastfeeding has a whole host of positive That's outcomes. Right. Mm -hmm. Kids live longer, you know, it decreases infant mortality, like kids dying after birth. Mm -hmm. It's better for their health, their, their weight, uh, they do better in school, like all these things. But you can't establish breastfeeding if you gave birth at 5 p.m. today and you've got to punch in at your local uh, fast food restaurant the next day. Right. So we know that this goes beyond being good for businesses, being good for parents. It's great for kids. Like, doesn't everybody want what's best for kids? And so that was kind of the story we had to keep pushing, you know. And, um, and I think that's how we were able to really get this victory. But yeah, it has to go national. The big businesses, we also have to make sure, though, because we saw this with some of the big announcements. They would have paid family leave for some of the employees that uh, were salaried kids, workers. The salaried ones yeah. and right. not the But then they have hourly people who do things like maybe deliver the videotapes right, or, or right. whatever the hourly workers do. And so just as advocates, we have to keep an eye on that to make sure as people are like, we're on the bandwagon too. Exactly. We want to make sure you're including everyone mm -hmm. because it's always been about those mm -hmm. low income workers that right. were left out. But speaking right. of that inclusion, Catherine, uh, I sort of, I, my ears perk up when they say it's not just for maternity, when men should and have to be included and vocal about their support, and it's not just for women who've had babies, even if dads want to stay home, like Zuckerberg famously yeah. took some time off mm -hmm. from Facebook. So how has men being involved sort of propelled this, and what is the role for men in getting involved with paid family leave? Well, certainly I think it goes to shifting the narrative around gender roles and who takes care of family members. But back to the details of the actual policy. Um, when the statewide policy is phased in fully in 2021, How's that it's taking going, so long? Yeah, well, it's an insurance system. Okay. So that means that employees are going to pay in about a dollar a week from their paychecks and that the fund needs to build up over time. So it will start in 2018 right. um, and then it will be phased in over a few years. Um, but when it's fully phased in, it's going to allow for 12 weeks of paid family leave um, for parents to stay home with a new child, uh, to care for a sick family member, 
or in um, situations where uh, there has to be arrangements because someone in the family is deployed in the military. What rate of pay? Was it be at full pay or 50 percent or 75? It's, it's not at full pay. It's okay. at two-thirds of the worker's average weekly wage. Okay. So let's say you make a thousand dollars a week. That means that you would take home six hundred and sixty dollars. Um, and that's up to a state cap which is right now around $850, but okay. will increase as the average the grows, statewide yeah. Yeah. weekly wage and increases. And is that the same if you're full-time or part-time, that same percentage? Yes, but of course, if you're part-time, you're gonna be making less money, less money per week. Um, but the, the benefit level is so important, and that's one of the, the core mm -hmm. pillars that we fought for in this policy and what makes it so strong. Um, you need an adequate benefit level in order for low-wage workers to be able to actually take time off. They mm -hmm. often don't have the kind of savings that other workers might have that they can rely on. Um, and certainly the other aspects of the policy, the 12 weeks, um, I think as Monifa alluded to, 12 weeks is really the bare minimum. The research has shown is um, so important for bonding and so important for the health of a birth mom and a newborn. Um, and it covers all businesses, which is so important, small businesses included. Small businesses really want to be able to provide this benefit, but often can't afford to, which means that um, this program, which is fully employee paid and set up, allows small businesses to attract mm -hmm. and be more competitive and, and bring in um, employees who are really looking for this kind of benefit. Sure. Well, we are in our very last moment, so I'm just going to ask you to share your websites and let us know how folks can get involved and really make sure that these reforms continue to grow. Well, thank you. The website is in the name. We're momsrising.org. Sign up and you'll get so much information about this issue, minimum wage, equal pay for women. That's right. And many more issues. All right, and we know the NYCL. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dot org, it, and you're there. And the council member is going to stick around with us for an extra second. So That's I'm going right. to say thank okay. you all for being here. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thanks for inviting me.